Moro, Brother Billy. Moro, Brother Anthony. I know you're going to ask me a couple of questions like, hey, what you wear in there? And I would try to distract you. I said, oh, see, I have my shirt, you know, because I always have, when I have an African thing, I always include Madagascar. You know, a lot of places they put the cutting that out, they include Madagascar. But then I know you wouldn't be talking about the shirt out there because you didn't see that. You say, what's you got on there? That's a fine garment, perhaps. Then I had to stand up a little bit and say, see? Look at the thing on it. You know what that is? That's a piece of food. Yeah, but you're not about to cook it. I know, but it's the apron. You call what I, well, let me tell you how I got into aprons. <laughs> I'm wearing an apron today. Well, first of all, I grew up with my grandmother. My grandmother could cook. I mean, really cook. I know a lot of people say their grandmothers can cook, but my grandmother could cook. Because we grew up on that, you know, what was called the welfare or the state or whatever it is, you know? Well, New York they call it welfare and California called it the state. Anyway, she could make a gourmet meal out of state food, which was really cheap food. In fact, you know, the priests, you know, Catholic Church, you know, they would always come around for a little food, you know, to talk to the parishioners, you know. And the priests would always come to my grandmother's house first. She had the best food, you know. Now, but the thing about my grandmother, you know, I began to say, well, Grandma, what you cooking? She said, food. <sighs> and she go like, well, I mean, uh, she said, look, you just watch. You know what she was saying? You want to learn? You got you to gotta watch. I'm going to tell you nothing. I'm going, oh, so I got to watch how much she puts in here. Well, you know, kid, I'm going like, okay, fine. Every once in a while I try to get To this day, she made this crumb cake. I don't know how to do it. My sister don't know what to do. She put, look, the secret ingredient to everything is love. She just put a lot of love in her food. That's the only thing I can say that's different than anybody else. But that's not the point I want to say. How I really got into cooking, well, quick, these, these aprons. See, I was a lab technician, so that was like recipes. You know, when you, when you do titrations and you you know, whatever. You know, but that's, that's recipes. That's not cooking. I worked for The Sopranos. I did craft service for The Sopranos. You know the TV program, The Sopranos? You know, Tony Soprano, blah, blah, blah. And I worked for it about two, well, half of season two, all of season three, a little bit of season four. And season three was the best season. You know why? I was doing craft service. Oh, I know you don't believe that. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Check it for yourself. Check all the things. Okay, that's not the point. So I started wearing work aprons when craft service. Now craft service, what they do is like, you, know, you have your, you have your regular, your, your food, you know, your food cart comes along, you have to send their same meals you know, twice a day, whatever it is. But the craft service, we got to get food all the time, quality food. We got to get the best, I mean, I learned a lot about getting the best of this and the best of that and blah, 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 blah. Because, you know, some people, because they're film people, you know, like the cinematographer, you know, the, 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 the director of photography. He don't want to leave that camera, so you got to give him some food every once in a while, you know, those finger sandwiches or whatever it is, you know, it's kind of good stuff. I was famous for my smoothies. In fact, one time, you know, uh, uh, Tony Soprano, he took my smoothies on a Friday night, he put vodka in the smoothies for the crew. <laughs> oh, but that's okay, I'm, I'm off the point here. All I'm trying to say is that food is interesting because you are what you eat, that's true. Mm. and what you put in your body. Now, one of the things I learned about the Soprano, for instance, we would not never get a certain kind of water that came from, well, uh, let's say, whatever country came from, because it came from that country, but they would store it in plastic bottles, and they would stay in the warehouse for a while. By the time it get to us, you know, you could taste the plastic or whatever in there, you know? So we had certain water that we get stored in plastic bottles. But now recently, not recently, but I've known this for a while, there's a thing that happened with the food. The food when you get things going, what happens, the food industry say, hey, this costs a lot. So they substitute something else for it. And one of the biggest substitutes they did way back when was a thing called bromine. Like B-R-O-M-I-N-E. I call it no brother of mine. Mm -hmm. Bromine is not a good thing. It's in everything. It's in your breads, it's in your plastics. And, 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 and it, it's not good for you. It's not good at all. So, but they did that because they used to have iodine and stuff. So now recently I've discovered that they, I knew that that kelp, you know, the sea, seaweed or whatever, I had to press it up. Uh, you know, some people like the taste, oh, that's all right, you know. 
but I just realized that that has a lot of iodine in it. And I just found this product that they have kelp powder. Now kelp, because it comes from the sea, is a little salty. So I can replace my salt with the kelp powder. Now just like anything else, you're not supposed to put a lot in there. You have to, everything in moderation. That's one thing that the good book is correct about. Everything in moderation. That's the problem. If bromine is every, everything, and sugar is in everything, you know, fructose, whatever have you, and, 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 and salt is in everything, when you put more on your thing, you, that's more you're taking. So even with this, you know, a, a powdered kelp, you know, kelp powder, I have to not put a lot on there. It only takes a little bit to replace my salt. Plus it's healthy for you because the iodine is for your thyroid. A lot of people have problems with their thyroid. Well, this will help because you ain't got to, you, you, instead of taking, well, all I'm trying to say, do the research. This is not one of those things that you know that, 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 that people know about because nobody wants to do research these days. You're happy with your diet, blah, blah, blah. Now, we're, we're, we're fortunate here in the Eastern Cape because at least our food is not that much, well, you can get food that's not that processed. You know, yeah, sure, we got the regular supermarkets, but if you want to, you know, you want a chicken, you can go down to Miss Lehepto and get some chicken and, you know, or maybe they stole her chickens. But the, the point is, you know, you can get, you know, fresh meat and blah, blah, and then you grow your vegetables, you can do all that stuff. You don't get that in the big cities and stuff like that. So, there you are. There you have it. I'm saying, I'm giving some advice. And this is not medical advice. This is ex experiential device. From my experience of being in the kitchen, and remember, I don't cook. I prepare food. See, you don't cook food. You prepare food. And preparation is everything. And what you use, the ingredients you use, that's also a lot of things. So put the best in your body and don't let the, the, the food industry, you know, do you wrong. One last thing. This is between me and you. I told you I grew up in the 60s. They used to have this thing, you know, with the black power movement. You know, the real staunch brothers, they say, if the white man touched it, leave it alone. Now they were actually talking about, don't touch it, women. You know, that's the way they, they rolled back then. But I translate to this then, if the man, or if the, if the industry touched it, if, they, if it's processed, <laughs> that's like if the, if the man touched it, leave it alone. Stay away from that processed stuff. This is just a little bit of, you know, stuff at a dispatch. From the Arch Director Emeritus, that, that would be me, T, from the Patterson's taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. Well, in this case, I actually let you know what I know.